tell you what, baby. Rethlin, Rethlin, uh, uh, watching from ringside. Is that you? That's me, baby. Live and in living color. Only oh. on KXBS, baby. The voice of Stockton. So people on the Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope land are tuning any way you want to because we are watching from ringside. All day, every day, only on Friday and maybe Saturday too. Sometimes on a Sunday because you know they got them special shows. Know what I'm talking about, baby? Stop stealing my gimmick. (laughs) But Ben, Ben, let's get into all seriousness. This is like... Uh, watching from ringside, uh, as we were talking about, is a pro wrestling show. With the fun. only pro wrestling show on KXGS. Yes. Or in Stockton. Or in Stockton, yes. Yeah, the, come tell us if you're somebody else. In. The premier podcast. Yeah. The premier podcast of pro wrestling talk in the Central Valley is me and Ben. And it's, it's fun. So we talk about the role of wrestling from our perspective and um, give you the latest going ons of what's going on. In the world of wrestling, right? Yep. WWE, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor. All in, NXT. too. NXT. Yeah, and all in. Which is brand new. Brand spanking new. So we're going to... Could gonna, change the face of wrestling as we know it. We're going to break down all of that throughout, well, whenever we have a show. So I'll tell you what, Ben. What? 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 Watching from Ringside Fridays on KXVS, the voice of Stockton. For Ben Sanchez, I'm Dustin Brightfield. Hello, welcome to Chef Tobias Cooks, here where we have kitchen conversations with professional chefs, cooks, home cooks, bakers, oh, and people that just can't cook. So join us every week for our kitchen conversations and learn a thing or two. And I don't burn nothing in my kitchen. Do you want to relive the golden days of Stockton? Join Nate Knott on Stockton Alive every first and third Monday at 6 p.m. Tune into thevoiceofstockton.org. This is Darius Oliver, and you're listening to 92.1 KXVS, The Voice of Stockton. The views and opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect those of KXVS The Voice of Stockton or its parents, affiliates, management, and staff. KXVS The Voice of Stockton presents The Lance McCann Show with your host, Lance McCann. Good morning, everybody. This is the Lance McCann Show, where we spotlight local small businesses and nonprofits. I'm a local real estate agent with Keller Williams. My license number is BRE01987449. Now that we got the legal stuff out of the way, this is Lisa Poff. She's a local nonprofit with Patriots supporting Tracy Warriors. Yes. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. This is great fun. That's uh, I'm glad to, you were able to make the trek yeah, down here and talk bet. about your organization. Um, so let's get started. Uh, what made you want to start a nonprofit? Um, our son had been in Afghanistan two years out of three, uh, and it, our family needed some place for support. We needed to uh, have some place where we could get information, uh, get involved in our community. We just we needed someone to be able to t- give us information about what he was doing, where he you know, a lot of things, and and it just wasn't readily available to us. So, uh, I learned then that that's what we needed to do. We needed to provide an organization for families to come to us and use us as a conduit. Uh, all of us have had have years of experience with our kids in the military, and there's five of us and we all are at different stages, and so we bring different different information, different experiences to the table. So families come in that were in the place I was in five years ago, completely lost and floundering, and uh, we can- there's no can central provide. location where people can go get information? No, no, uh, it's, it all, the information train is between you and your service member, and more often than not, your service member is so wrapped up in boot camp and, and 
getting their, on their feet, starting their new lives that quite often the family members are the ones that are kind of left in the dark for the most part. Wow. Yeah. I, as, as a parent, I can totally understand it's horrible. Where's my kid? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on with my yeah. kid? Well, especially after boot camp, you know, that's, that's in, in our, in our case, um, going into the military was not a surprise for us. That was always our son's goal, uh, his passion. So, you know, I, we just knew that was coming down the pike. Uh, and going into boot camp, um, the bases have Facebook pages set up. They do have an information path for you, but once they leave boot camp and get into their first duty station, then the information is entirely between you and your and your service member. And in our case, our son wasn't uh, out of boot camp and at his first duty station more than two months, and he was already on a plane to Afghanistan. Oh, wow. So we were, not only were we newbies in the military realm, uh, we were dumbstruck that all of a sudden, wow, now we've got to deal with overseas deployment. Mm. You know, so there was no time to acclimate. And so for us, it was like, wow, I need people to tell me what's going on like, when we go I weeks. Yeah. So what does your organization do? Um, how, do the, how do you help other patriots? Uh, well, we have monthly meetings uh, where we have, uh, like I said, the five of us. Um, we have uh, Karen McCrary. She's our uh, mental health uh, counselor. Uh, she works with uh, psychiatrist Dr. Uh, Victoria Bocanfuso. Uh, these two gals have stepped up to the plate and are uh, providing therapy for families that are going through some very difficult times, uh, whether it's post or, or uh, uh, current service for their, uh, their service member uh, and the effects it's had on their family. Uh, and then we have Shannon Johnson, uh, Sylvia Madrid, um, and Julia Conover. And like I said, all of us, uh, other than the two gals from the uh, mental health uh, uh, world, we, we've all bring different experiences to the table so i think uh, families the families get lost in the we do get lost absolutely and it's and and some families don't want to know they don't want to hear about it they don't want to know about it uh for me that wasn't i'm i'm a very hands-on i wouldn't i couldn't i couldn't survive that uh but so what we do is we have monthly meetings uh currently at the transit station in tracy uh soon to come the first of the year i think we're going to be over at the grand theater uh but it's the second wednesday of every month and we bring resources we we have our uh our mental health counselor uh, attend all of our meetings. So if there's somebody that comes in that would like one-on-one -on -one therapy, they can make those arrangements uh, off-site uh, in her office. Um, but we are the conduit to the community. You know, there's a lot of things that go on in Tracy and the county that most people don't know about. Because you've teamed up with somebody here locally in Stockton, Yes, right? I have, and, <laughs> and it's been the best thing ever. Yes, Miss Maria Tompkins is the bomb. Yeah, Blue Star Mom is yes, a good yes. friend of mine. Absolutely, yes. And so, and, and she has graciously taken us under her wing uh, and introduced us into the Stockton community. Uh, and she's also um, willing to have us co host. Uh, we've got an event September 1 uh, here at the Art Lab on Miracle Mile. And uh, thank you, Drew she's Hunt, been, for that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. So, so that's what we do. We get phone calls uh, from A to Z. It's just kind of a nuts so what, and bolts thing. What, so, what kind of therapy? Because there's all types of therapy. What type of therapies do you offer? And do you uh, PTSD, um, anxiety? Yes. There's a big one that's not not too many people are talking about is sexual trauma. That's a huge that's a huge problem, and you're right. That really is not uh, as commonplace as PTSD or or um, problematic behaviors as a result of TBIs. Uh, but you're right. Uh, For the general public, what does TBIs? Oh, I'm have? sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, traumatic brain injuries. So, uh, so it's, and that, that is addressed. Uh, these two gals are, uh, able and, and willing to go ahead and provide help for those that are struggling through the result of, uh, um, uh, sexual, sexual trauma, trauma. trauma yes. Uh -huh. Does that generally affect more women than men or does it, or, or men? I, you know, I, I don't know, but statistically I would, I would make the assumption and I could be completely wrong in this, uh, only in that men particularly in the military world, would not discuss having a woman traumatize them. Um, that <laughs> but, would be but, my guess, but, but I, I, I could know, be wrong. It, what I've heard, uh, and I know somebody personally, it was uh, a, a man who was uh, assaulted by other men. Okay, so other service members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure there's a percentage of that out there, and, uh, and you know, these... 
the helps here. Uh, you know, we can we can help them work their way through that. And I'm sure that's a very serious what's issue. What's the cost for, for the therapy? Uh, currently, nothing. They are donating their gentlemen. time. Doing so, good for the community. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we're very lucky and, and blessed to have them on board with us. And so if they want to get help, you, how would you suggest them reaching out to you? Come to a meeting first? Uh, yes, they can, they can come to one of our meetings. Uh, we are at the transit station uh, in Tracy. Uh, we, you can contact us. Uh, my phone number is 209-815-3831. You're welcome to connect with us through the web, uh, Facebook, yeah. email, uh, pstw at yahoo.com. You know, whatever Everything. works for you. <laughs> the social media, you're like you're so connected now. Well, yeah. Well, well, you can't function without it. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, is there any paid staff, or that everybody's volunteer? We're all volunteer. Uh, no one takes a salary, um, and all of we are solely funded through donation, the generosity of our community, um, and individuals that uh, have somebody in the service. They they get they get what what our passion is they get what drives us and uh, and we are fortunate enough to have many people in our community that attend our events consistently spread the word of what we're doing um, I like to know. say serving the ones who serve yes and, and you're right I we couldn't we couldn't do the things that we are uh, given the opportunity to do without the support and you're right that they're serving their their community as well through us we gotta take care of our veterans it's a um huge passion of mine it's yeah, funny and i'm thankful for that that's wonderful <laughs> you know i started out like uh i'll start running to veterans and then it's developed into this huge thing and now being the vice president of uh, the local dav charities of san joaquin is like a huge honor and like wow yeah, look where look wonderful. where this has gone yeah. and now i'm able to with this have a show and do, be able to serve the the ones who served yep yeah, and, and it, it's, it's a fantastic passion uh, for us. It's, it's about giving back to families and vets that we can't, all of our kids are away from home. Uh, we don't have the luxury of, of dinners or the occasional, you know, going out to the movies. But um, so we take that energy and, and that, that passion and we, and we put it into other families. So what do you do at your meetings? Do you talk all about your problems or is there sometimes positive stuff or you know what, tell no me there is that. positive things because you know military is not all, all about negative um my kid loves being deployed loves it um <laughs> it drives mom crazy it does drive mom <laughs> crazy and um you know if truth be known would i have chosen a different path i i don't think there's a mom out there that wouldn't say yes but um i am equally proud as i am equally terrified <laughs> yes, I can so uh, so we do we talk about the good because there are a lot of wonderful things that have come uh come out of our son being in the service um you know not some not so hot but you know you you deal with them as a family you 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 deal with them and you find your resources you communicate uh that's a huge huge factor is communication um so so how many people do you have show up at the meetings? Oh, we can have anywhere from five people. Uh, we can have up to 15. It just, it just kind of depends. Summertime is hit and miss with folks. Uh, and uh, so it's just at random. You have any success stories you could share? Uh, well, we do have one. We had a gal come in. Uh, her son was going through school uh, to be a fire pilot and um, uh, uh, fighter pilot. And there was angst on her side because she hadn't heard from him for a long period of time and uh, one of the Marines that was attending the meeting he said you know let me explain to you what he's doing and uh, she walked out of there feeling so much better she then went on with uh, the uh, the therapist and um, between the two of them she has a better understanding and through the support group a better understanding of what her son is doing and not not feeling as if she had just been cut off yeah. So it's very so, intense training, I would imagine, to be a fighter yes, pilot. Yes, yes. And here's a young man that's going into an amazing career, phenomenal. Um, and the Marine told her, he says, you know, we, we know you're home safe. We know you guys are doing your normal routine things in life. And we just put that in the back burner. It's the only way we can get through it. Hmm. It's not that we don't care. It's not that we've forgotten. Uh, we, have to, we have to dig deep and, and focus. Push forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, and you know, these guys so are young. Up. <laughs> yes, and and they're young men, and quite often, most of them have never had never left home, had never lived on their own. You know, so they're dealing with a whole host of experiences that they'd never had before. Wow, never thought of it like that. Yeah, they're newbies in, in life, you know, right. and independent thinking. Uh, well, of course, the military doesn't provide much of that. But, <laughs> you know, these are guys that now have to manage their own finances, get themselves to and from uh, uh, mess hall or defect on time, get their laundry done, make sure everything, they're responsible for all of their gear. You know, or quite often, most of them have come from families where mom and dad have kind of overseen all that. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, you know, it's like, you got to grow up really I fast. I got to do it myself. Uh-oh. Uh, I tell my kids, like, my job is to make you be uh, a young man or a young woman before it's time. Yeah. You know, so you might not like me sometimes. That's but right. I'm, I'm not going to be here to take care of you. Yep. Well, and, and that's, you know, how we've always raised our kids. You know, we love them to death and, and would do anything in the world for them. But it isn't always our job to be your friend. Yes. Sometimes <laughs> parenting stinks my tough daughter, love is hard she bought this you know, she's got this new flask and i put it in the dishwasher she's like it doesn't go there i'm like <laughs> oh my i'm like oh you know what i go the proper response would have been dad i'll wash it yeah instead of leaving yeah. it in the sink for right, a while right right i go it, i'll wash it because it's not supposed to be put in the dishwasher dad i'll yep. take care of it <laughs> okay but giving me your, your little 13 year old attitude Oh, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> you, uh, well, ours are 26 and 27, uh, and, and, you know, you get that was, into that stage that was where you're stupid. That nice version. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. How all of a sudden did we become so dumb as parents? It's amazing to me. It's like, wow. Yeah, I go, I know your game. You put it in the sink, and then it's magically done in the morning because mom get she was, well, I was going to wash it in the morning. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're going to get up before mom? Yeah. She's well. like, no, I get up at 7. I go, right, your mom's up way before, and then you're, it's done. Yeah. You don't even say thank That's you. That's funny. And she was like, okay. I'm like, oh, I'll <laughs> choke you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, today's yeah. her birthday. I'm like, oh, wow. Well, so happy like, birthday to her. <laughs> That's fantastic. I know. I was like, wow. I, so I she's a teen her, like, I can't today. believe you, I left and not told you happy birthday. But I, gave, oh. you know, I always give her a hug and kiss. Yeah. Her, so. That's sweet. Um, what, um, what is the most mental health issues you, you see come through your organization? Um, problematic behaviors. Um, a lot of our men and women come back from deployment um, and they are on hyper mode. So they get in a car here and they drive fast. They eat fast. Um, they are very impatient with the pace of typical right. life outside of, uh, right. you know, their, their you think experience. that's why some guy, I say guys, but I would imagine women too, go back to the military because yes. they're so. It's a connection like no other. It's a bond, and I and I, I I'm fortunate enough that our son, uh, I haven't heard it all by any stretch, but I have an, an understanding as to what draws him. And uh, my husband was in law enforcement for 25 years before he retired. And I, and I understand, you know, our daughter's a medic firefighter. So I get that, that communal, that community, that bond that you form during um, tragedy. Um, and you know that those that are around you are willing to sacrifice for your life as you are for theirs. So it creates a bond that, that most of us that are not within that, that genre get it's very difficult for people to understand that on the outside. So um, when people separate service, uh, they're they're lacking in that in that identity, that continuity, that connection with people, and people don't understand their mindset and why it's difficult to go into restaurants. Um, their humor sometimes can be a little dark. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, I'm a friend. <laughs> He's like that. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you're not used to it, it's very off-putting for some people. Mm -hmm. They're like, whoa, you know, that's probably not this the most appropriate thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and they just go 100 miles an hour sometimes. And, and it's not, that's not to say that everybody is like that, but there is a fair percentage of people that have the effects of, of, of um, deployment. Uh, and they, they are typical in most behaviors. Uh, so that's that's a lot of what we focus on sometimes Slowing we end up them with down, acclimate them back to, to society I well 
that's something that each each individual has to find their own path to make that happen. Transitioning into civilian life can be extremely difficult. Um, that's why majority of people go into law enforcement, uh, any emergency service, fire, uh, paramedic, because there's that, that community, that connection. But for those that don't, it, it, can, it can lead to challenges in, in relationships. It can lead to drinking, drug use. There's a lot of things that they haven't come to terms with that they experienced through their deployments. And then we end up with, you know, with a lot of, a lot of sad uh, situations that people well, find themselves in. Grateful to have somebody in an organization like yours to, to help. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Buffer the the outcome that could happen yeah and that's the whole that's the whole goal in a nutshell is that if we can connect families and we can provide them resources bring them together with other families that are going through similar experiences uh, and um, our hope is that they then take that information and have uh, some some understanding and when they go home, it calms the, the frustration in the home life. And that then carries over to the uh, relationship with the service member. So they, the, the, pa- the parent is able to understand where the service yeah. member is coming mm-hmm. from. So it helps. Why do you act like that? Right. Well, and, and that's well, the thing. I don't understand why you're, you're acting like that. Right. And then you have to learn. And, and that was one of the things that was very difficult for us when our son came home for the first time is we, we anticipated the boy that came home was, the was coming home as a kid that left. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it, it wasn't 30 minutes and we realized, uh, okay, I, you it's not him. Yeah. Where is he? <laughs> He's got a full beard now, you know, <laughs> like whatever. Yeah. yeah so it grew it, six inches. And it, and it took... Him finally saying to me, Mom, you have to understand, my world is not what it was. And you have to come to terms with that and understand I am not the same. Mm-hmm. I'm not, it's not to say I'm, you know, I, I can't connect and I don't want a relationship. It's, I'm different now. I've experienced things that, that, that have changed me. And you have to find a way to understand how to connect with me. And that was one of the hardest things. I was like, tch, tch. Yeah. <laughs> Slapped you in the face. You're like, oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. No, it, so it's, it's not you. It's me. <laughs> well, you know, and sometimes it is. Sometimes we, we are so hell-bent that we are going to have our kid back. That, we, you know, we want you to behave the way you did. And, um, you know, when you've got your, your traumatic brain injuries and you're suffering from PTSD and you've experienced things that you and I could hardly imagine to wrap our brain around, uh, that's a pretty tall order to expect them to come back and park that somewhere in their brain and not have any reaction to it socially you know that's that's a really tough one to expect and i think that's where a lot of the frustration comes from is that um we you know especially when they first come home you know it's a big hoop de doo the buses roll in and the guys are all in formation and then they're allowed to leave and the families you know the wives are uh, running towards them and the kids and you know women will talk I don't know what the, the stat is on that mm-hmm. but I mean we can talk five times to a man and these guys have been in an environment where they're they're not they've not been bombarded and then you know quite often as women we want to jam the last nine months to a year in the first 15 minutes so it's overload hear that <laughs> <laughs> I, I admit it. I get it. I get it. The so, first one to ever admit that. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's like, whoa. Okay, so now we're not together 30 minutes, and now it's like, mm, I need to pull back. This is sensory overload. I can't, I can't do this. Yeah. So that's where it's important for families to realize, and, and not just families, but anybody that stepped up. Yes, they have to realize, you know, where they've come from and what they've experienced. Give them time. Give them time and... and let them breathe and give them an opportunity to uh, adjust to their to their new environment. Nice. So you're having an event coming up? We you are. Mention that again. Yes, uh, September 1 here at the Art Lab on uh, Miracle Mile, uh, thanks to, uh, to Drew. And, uh, and we are co-hosting with um, Delta Patriots Blue Star Moms. They are gracious enough to let us tag along and uh, be a part of that event. Uh, we are also... Uh, doing an event at Windmill Ridge Winery that has been uh, that's that's kind of where we started initially uh, 
I'm a dear friend with the owner, uh, Jamie Lopez, and she um, called me and said, we're going to sit and have a glass of wine. We're going to talk about what you're going to do with your nervous energy. <laughs> okay. And sounds so like we a, did. Sounds like a good plan to me. <laughs> oh, it was. It, and, and, and really, it was such a pivotal moment. And at the time, I didn't realize it because I was so wound up. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize to the extent that I was, but it was obviously it was clear to her. So um, she says, okay, we're going to do a dinner and you're going to, uh, we're going to donate the proceeds to another organization for postage. Okay, I'll do that. So, and we did it and I was bit by the bug and I realized, wow, you know, we could take this to so many different levels and reach so many people. And yes. so that, that was the, uh, that was the inception of, of Patriots right there at Windmill Ridge Winery. So. And a beautiful winery, by the way. We, we yeah. Did, I was at the, it uh, is. the last sip and paint here. There. It's pretty amazing. A good turnout. Yeah, and they're great people. There has never been a time, uh, if, if I've come to them and said, hey, you know, whatever time you have free on your schedule, this is what we would like to do and why. And they have been beyond generous with their time and their beautiful winery to support us. Um, Thank you, Windmill Ridge. Yes, thank you very, very much. So if people want to get a, get a hold of you to either donate or maybe some services, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Uh, Facebook. You guys can connect with us on Facebook. We have a donate button attached to our Facebook page. Uh, like I said, you can contact me at 209-815-3831, uh, um, pstw at yahoo.com if you want to shoot an email. Uh, you know. Stand out on a street corner and holler with a sign. I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> and when are your meetings held? Uh, the second Wednesday at 6.30. Uh, second Wednesday of every month. And like I said, currently they are at the transit station in Tracy. Um, you know the address? Huh? But um, I don't. I don't have the okay. digits on that. On that. Um, the transit station in Tracy. Yes. And I should know that. My team's going to go, oh, yeah, <laughs> really good, Lisa. Great job. Hooker. Uh, she screwed up. Uh, um, but uh, we are losing our lease come January 1. And so we are in the process of getting um, a new lease with uh, the Grand uh, Theater oh, on nice. 11th Street or Central on Central in Tracy. So we try and keep it downtown. So often after our meetings we'll go out have dinner so we kind of support the communities the restaurants and places around They're them supporting you so you yes, might as well exactly keep it, exactly. Keep it local is what yep. i like to say yes and it's so. a cool downtown we love it you know great people down there yes well thank you lisa for stopping by thank and sharing you. your story i thank really you appreciate much. you taking the time out of your day oh my gosh it's been my pleasure thank you so goodbye everybody and remember yes you can with lance can <laughs> have a great day everybody <laughs>